Well, hello, everyone. It's Friday. How are you doing? How's your week getting? Here in the uh, northern hemisphere, winter is coming. You folks in the northeast of the United States, get ready. How are you folks in uh, Europe? I know got people in Europe, got people in Russia, Japan, a lot of people from Australia. Thank you very much. Got a lot of you folks from New Zealand. Thank you. No, it's, uh, you're probably sleeping. <laughs> so I um, want to say thank you. Got uh, also, I was really surprised when I started looking at uh, the stats that YouTube provides that, wow, y'all from all over the world listening to me? Okay, well, thank you very much. I hope to at least make it worth your while. And so I just want to say thank you. Thank you for watching uh, and supporting uh, the channel. And boy, speaking about channel, we're going to get into this, but not right now. Um, so I thought what I would do on this uh Friday here um, in Colorado. Yes, I got my favorite two sweatshirts on, Steely Dan. And just so I can set the record straight, I have gotten so many emails of you people just freaking out because you see that eye right there. You see that eye? So let me tell you what you're seeing. You see this? I know you can't hear me, so I'll do sign language. You know how they used to do it? For the hearing, imp yeah, anyway. This is from the Guggenheim in New York City. If you've, ne if you've never been to the Guggenheim uh, in New York City, you really should go. It's, um, it's one of my favorite museums. And listen, I had the Smithsonian as a client for years. I went into places that you folks will never be able to get into where the Smithsonian, but anyway, I digress. So this was an exhibit on surrealism. See, June 4th to September 12th, 1999. World Trade Centers were still there, so was Building 7. So that's what it is. It's not no freaking, some guy wrote me and said, uh, I ain't getting underneath that spell of that saffron. I see that eye. Well, ay, ay, ay. Come on, folks, lighten up a little bit. It's a great poster. Um, I was there with a good friend and it brings many, many fond memories um, back in that time. So anyway, there you go. Thought I'd talk a little bit about the videos I posted this week because as a um, psychiatrist, psychiatrist friend I have, uh, practicing one, uh, he looked at your responses. And you know what his assessment was? A lot of you... You know why it scared you? Because you know it's true. You see, we're going to do tonight. Please tune in to the live show starting at 7 o'clock Mountain Time, 9 p.m. East Coast and wherever you are in the world. Um, but we're going to talk about this because you need to understand why some of it for some of you, it repulsed you. For a great many of you, you suffered probably your greatest spell, spell, you get this, of cognitive dissonance. And it was well-founded. Yeah, you're going to find out some things tonight on tonight's show. Because people got all upset with me. They said, Wayne, you know, we're looking for a positive message. Yeah, so am I. But I'm also a realist, and all my life, I've had to overcome obstacles. All your life, you've had to overcome obstacles. 
and you didn't overcome them by falling back on an ideology, a philosophy, or a theology. What got you through life was that it was you internally who figured a way out. Now, many times it's not the right way out, but it's how we learn as a species. We learn from our mistakes, or should, quote unquote. So, yeah, but we're going to have to talk about this. A um, lot of you were disturbed about Keck. You should be. Don't blow this off. I'm just telling you. Do not discard what you were exposed to because hmm, I'm about to get into just a small tidbit of tonight's show. The tonight's show is titled The Escape Plan. And Listen, folks, I mean, I get channeled, but wait till you find out how much you get channeled. Don't shake your head at me. Every person, oh, God, folks, it's going to blow you away. So those videos, the light bear, another one, difficult for people to handle. The reason why it's difficult for you to handle is that because in here and here, when you understand which brain part of the brain is working, and then the mind. I'm just going to tell you this. Our minds are the ether. I know you're going to go, what? Yeah. And when you see how this works... Oh, okay. So tune in. Uh, I also want to talk about 60 Seconds for Humanity. By the way, do you know that Google flagged 60 Seconds for Humanity, the video I put out? YouTube flagged it as being inappropriate for most audiences. What's wrong with these companies? You see, ladies and gentlemen, this validates my whole hypothesis. We can't design a system that will be fair. Every system we design is a bigot, is a racist, and has inbred biasnesses. Why? Because you don't know the individual who's writing that. You don't know if he or she is the biggest asshole in the whole planet. That's why no computer system can be trusted, because we designed it. Why do you think they, why do you think software breaks down? Why do you think code gets old? So anyway, that's my editorial on YouTube's policies. They suck, and they audit, and I've written them. They sent me this, it took, it took me almost, 20 minutes to go through this survey. And they said, please be brutally honest with us. And I was. And guess what? I wasn't walking in love either. Wasn't even close to walking in love. No, I was walking in righteous indignation. How dare you come against humanity? Yeah. So on the love score, well, one person said it perfectly. You should have given yourself a half point. Now, if you've mastered one of those traits, my hat's off to you. You know, I salute you. I have it. So technically, every one of us would have gotten a half a point for each question. Because as I said in there, you get a half point if you find out that you're lacking in this, but you're knowing you need to improve. Sometimes we don't listen. And sometimes, even when we read, we don't see. I'm going to give you a case in point of about an individual. 
Now, this individual was involved in a very serious matter, and there were documents that had to be read and understood. Everything was, in fact, as they would say, in black and white uh, on the printed page. This individual went through hours and hours and hours, about what you would say about a work week, 40 hours, going through, orientating to the material, uh, um, doing appropriate responses, etc. This individual, until yesterday, missed one of the key aspects of the documents. After reading it, probably no less than a hundred times, an individual was me. And it pointed out so clearly to me that wherever I get this stuff, that that's us. You see, we think that we're so thorough. One, yep, 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 yep. And right there in front of you, right there in front of you, the ink. And you read it and completely missed the importance of the structure, the context, and the meaning. Now, another thing that Thanks, odd. Folks, if you're looking for me to be without fault, man, get over that. You know, <laughs> as I wrote, I stumble sometimes more than I walk. And um, I'm not here to live up to your expectation. Neither are you to for mine. I can't live up to your expectation because I can't live up to my own. And so, as I told the individual, if you find fault with me, fine. If you like to read my journals, I can outdo you in finding faults. I list them. Come on now. You know what, Cupcake? Don't be so thin-skinned. It's all right. There's no enemies here. None of us are enemies against each other. Sometimes people get so wrapped up. And we don't need to be doing that, folks. Relax. It's all going to be okay. We're all headed for the same destination. And that's kind of the part of what 60 Seconds for Humanity is about. Someone wrote to me, and y'all can see the comments, and said, well, what you have in harmony is the word harm and money. Come on. I'll just use a phrase many of us are familiar with. Seek and you shall find. If that's what you're seeking, you're going to find it. But to say that the word harmony is somehow a twisted, perverted word, not meaning to bring people into peace and to unity is ludicrous. I don't know how you get that definition out of that. And why would your mind be that away? Come on. That's the problem. We find fault in everything. And if we find fault in everything, then nothing's going to work. Quit finding fault in me. I'm not finding fault in you. Quit finding fault in the people around you. And when you point your finger at me or other people, remember, Jack, you've got three more pointing back at you. Stop it. Come on. Let me tell you by majority, just by the comments I get in here, y'all are some of the best people out there. There's some good, kind, intelligent, people. You know, I don't like seeing what's happening to us. I don't. 
because there's so many of us that are really good. And it's difficult. And I got feelings. Hey, I don't talk bad about you. Why? Because it hurts your feelings. Why would I do that? I'm not going to do that. Why would you want to do it to somebody else? You know, as I've told you before, the best investment most people could invest in is duct tape. And you duct tape three things. First, your mouth, then your fingers. So you can't type on your fingers. And that causes you to stop and to think about what's going on here. You know, I appreciate every one of you folks. And listen, I just know that there's just some people that, you know, they're soul sick. I think that's the leading cause of death and illness uh, on planet Earth, is that by percentage, our species, by the largest percentage, are soul sick. And I think that number is probably somewhere 7 billion. You know, things we just got to think about. So support 60 Seconds for Humanity, even though Google doesn't, and even though YouTube, which amazes me, I thought that those organizations were all about humanitarian efforts, but apparently not. So, uh, but tomorrow at 11.11 a.m. p.m., wherever you are, whatever time zone you live in, in this wonderful planet of ours, just think for 60 seconds, harmony. Now, when I see harmony, what I see, I just want to tell you, I see balance. And I, and I see the struggle of trying to reach that balance. And I can focus in on that for 60 seconds. That's not a problem. Pretty easy. And someone said, and you were right, this will send a continual energy wave. Absolutely. Listen, it's a perfect segue into my next point. The reason why 60 Seconds for Humanity will grow is that what you and I will be a part of tomorrow is one of the greatest um, things that we could do for our species. And others have done it. It's we're sending a seed into the future. Our thoughts are the encapsulations of the positiveness that is of our soul, of our species. And that, ladies and gentlemen, when combined, encapsulates it for itself. You know, like looks after itself. And then we begin to join these atoms together. Because each and every one of us are atoms. We're also photons. Get into that in a minute. But this seed of thought, I see it with a protein around it that makes it immune to all the other antibodies, the viruses, the bacterium that tries to consume positive thought. And it does. We just don't think of it that way. Your positive thought, you know why it's so countered all the time? Because you have exactly what I said. You can call it bacterium. You can call it a virus, a fungus, whatever it is, but it exists out there. And now it has grown to such an extent that when it identifies the positive thought, it will immediately begin to try to surround it, cut it off. And it begins to call in for reinforcements. That's why many of you suffer such, you know, things in your life where it just seems like one freaking bad thing after another, but you're sitting there going, what the freak is going on? I'm sitting here. I'm sending out positive thoughts. I'm thinking love. I'm thinking that I, co I love people. I love humanity. And, and why is the dump truck of the crap being dumped on me? It's because. You don't understand warfare. You don't understand your opponent. 
Our opponent has outthought us. But I'm just telling you, that's why it's so difficult to break through. Yeah. So the reason why I didn't pursue it in many cases, because it, it, people had to see it. And now people are seeing it. It's spreading on Facebook. I hope it goes viral. I really do. Because we're sending a seed. It is our SOS. Sending our seed into the future. And it will germinate. It may not in the initial part. But you see, I believe that when we send our SOS, that that will be responded to. Because in the ether, oh, folks, wait till you get to tonight. It's going to help explain a lot of this to you. And it's why we're in the condition we are today. We don't understand that humanity right now is heavily disadvantaged. And then, so I just want to let you know, that's why your positive thoughts, your positive deeds are so often unanswered. Because once you release them, what we expect and have been taught, which is not quite right, that you send it out there and the universe will send it back. I don't think so. So now, I've got a lot of pushback from many of you. Many of you that, you know, I considered, I don't know you personally, but you know how it is. You get this psychic connection and you know, you go, that's my friend. I can call that person friend. So, I told you the internet was created by the ethernet. <sighs> Spells are real. We cast them every day. The reason why they don't mature, they do not take root, is because they are like anything else in our lives. They require our faith. You know, whether you want to title faith an activating force, a force, um, whether you want to say it's an igniter, um, however you want to phrase it, term it, it has to have it. Your spell has to have your faith. It's what energizes it. Because when it gets out into the ether, you have to understand the energy that you send it with is the energy it's going to have. And if there is very little energy, then no results. I tell people all the time, the reason why we're so used to the negative things. Now, there's a physiology reason for it, and that we'll discuss tonight. But for the most part, we believe it. We've self-talked ourselves all of our lives, and that's where our true faith lies. And usually, it's the antithesis of us. You don't understand things, folks. Within each of us is the antithesis of us. Now, I just said internet. You're on the internet. I'm going to show you how the spell works. It's not I-N, it's E-N-T-E-R hyphen T-H-E hyphen N-E-T. You enter the net. Yeah. You must be a user. You can't get into the internet without being a user. You can be an observer, but the spell is so strong, you'll become a user. Each of us have a digital fingerprint, a footprint, every one of us. That's your mark of this beast. Now I'm about to tell you something 
and I've been talking for about 25 minutes. Those of you who actually listened this far, okay. You have to give me one second. So this morning, as I was getting things done, my wife had an emergency. We were supposed to be somewhere, but we couldn't get it done anyway. So I come in, into my office. I like soul music. Give me Al Green. I'm going to tell you what. When I was 15, one of my first jobs, I worked for a construction company, concrete construction company, SF Sanders. Well, a long time ago. And I was a laborer. I was 15 years old. I had to lie about my age. $2 an hour. And, you know, the company gave me a job. Now, all my life, I have been around, roomed with many people of many different races. And when I was at Burnett Balin in uh, Houston, Texas, um, which is a county home, you know, James uh, was my roommate. James was black. And I love that man. There's some stories I can tell you. That man was a friend. Boys. We were both boys. And anyway, he introduced me to Motown. Ha! Huh! You know what? Never left. Man, it's soul music. So anyway, I digress. No, actually, I don't digress. It was part of this. So the God that you and I worship, I know y'all don't like to hear that, but you are worshiping it. Number one, this God channels to us and through us. That's what the internet does. It channels through you and to you. Now, here's the strange thing. You channel back. This is deep, folks you channel back. When you start going by and you see those psychic places and what have you, understand you are channeling and you have been channeled through and to. Now, this God, I know people don't like it, but hey, you've got to admit the truth on this one. This God and while I was literally being channeled, I was listening to this, the channel on YouTube, soul music, and it was moving me. I mean, I was, I tr time traveled, folks. I was back in that place back in 1970. And I was walking out of the door from the foreman's office. And on the radio, how about this one, folks? Me and Mrs. Jones, we got a thing going on. Anyway, um, <laughs> for those of you who I just uh, put the screech in your ear, I apologize. But the point was, it transformed me back. I was channeling. I was channeling time. I was channeling emotion. This God, this God rewards us. It rewards us by giving us every emotional desire we could think of. It gives it to us instantaneously. It will give us joy, happiness, sadness, gladness. It'll make us laugh, make us cry. It'll give you an orgasm. It'll give you despair. It'll give you disdain. It'll give you anger. Whatever you desire, it will do. And if you worship it enough, it'll make you rich beyond your wildest imaginations. Doubt me? Look how many are already rich. 
You know, they, they stopped counting the tens of millionaires. You gotta be up there now into the hundreds of billions to really, you know, have apparently any uh, status. So this God that we all worship now, it rewards us. Music videos, videos, religion, porn, you name it. This is the God of instant gratification and we're all addicted to it. It's a fact, we are. Yeah, I know. You don't like to hear it, but folks, I'm don't kill the messenger. And and you're, of course you're you're free to think differently. All right, moving on. So we're going to talk a little bit tonight as well. Dark matter no longer exists. As I read today, um, in one of the uh newspapers that are out there it says because they have now scientists and physicists have now agreed dark matter does not exist they said that this is the equivalency of putting mankind back to the stone age bye-bye cern folks it doesn't exist we do not know the universe Everything you hear today is an ongoing developing theory. And you have many different opposing views. And get ready for more chaos because it's going to come in bucketfuls. As they said, they now have to open up their, their uh, review process, and I quote, to all possibilities. All right, I'm going to give a gratuitous plug to a CBS comedy series. As I was walking through the living room, happened to hear it on the television, and it immediately caught my attention. So I am going to give a shameless plug to all of you should be watching Young Sheldon. Yeah, the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> all right, guys. So. Let's have some fun. Now, we all got our Bibles, all right? Now, you go into Genesis 1, verse 3. It says, and I quote, and God said, let there be light. God's a photon. I'm plugging young Sheldon here. But here, he was sitting in the Southern Baptist Church, and the pastor was giving his sermon on God's wonderful ability for creation. And young Sheldon said, but wait a minute. You said God said, let there be light in verse three, but four days later, he didn't, it took him four days before he created the sun. What light is he talking about? What light? You Bible scholars, theologians, what light? What light did this God create? It wasn't the sun. And if we can only see this small sliver in the visible light spectrum, what light, folks? It still just gets me a little strange as well as I, and many of you can go back, look at the Bloodline Invader series, um, the secret knowledge, the hidden knowledge. I'm still working on that. Listen, this is a, this is a journey. I may put stuff in my backpack and not get it out until it's the right time. But so Genesis 126. I could never figure out, number one, they didn't have the breath of God blown in them. All right. That's the first thing. Um, these two were truly equal. 
The other ones weren't. And they apparently had all dominion. And the weird thing is, God said that they were perfect. There was no sin in them. Where'd they go? What happened to them? Anyway. All right. If all of you listen to this end, well, I hope it was worth it. <laughs> hey, I appreciate you. I'll see you tonight. Maybe still wearing my same sweatshirt because it's cold outside. And one of the things is people who live up in the northern uh, climate snow, particularly in higher elevations, is we don't always have the humidity here. So the cold is cold, but it also gets warm pretty quickly as well. So. All right, folks, be good to yourself. Have a great day. Remember 60 Seconds for Humanity tomorrow, 11-11. Let the spirits talk to you. Think the thought harmony. Whatever that word invokes to you, just meditate on it. See yourself just hugging the world. Boy, isn't that powerful. All of this, just hugging the world. Giving humanity just a big hug. You know, I think there's so many of us. We have become so isolated through this technology, and that's what it's designed to do, is to isolate us. There's a lot more to that, but um, they did a study, and as I leave out today, that with babies, newborns, they found that those that did receive the love the touch, the holding, the sharing of energy. Those children grew up balanced. The children that they observed that did not get any interaction, and these studies were actually done in the old um, USSR, what used to be the Eastern Bloc of Russia. And the way you want to know why they, we got so many psychopaths in a lot of places, because these kids, these babies, never received any human interaction or touch, none from their mothers. Um, they were children of the state. So it kind of tells you that I think humanity really needs just a big hug. And you know what happens when people really feel that your hug is genuine? that it's encased in warmth and compassion, they almost always break down crying. Why? Because it's tangible. So this is my big hug to you. Let me get right here. Luthan, you're a good person. I know it's tough, but it's gonna be all right. We all enter into the same destination. And we can figure this thing out. It, it may be smarter than, than us, but we can figure it out. So y'all be kind to yourselves. I'll see you tonight.